Hello, my name is Carol. This is my channel called Sew Carol, and you're joining me in my sewing room today for Hashtag Friday Sews. So Hashtag Friday Sews, of course, was started by the lovely Jen in today in Jen's sewing room. She started this a couple of years ago just to get the YouTube sewing community together all in one place, and you can find out what we've been up to during the week. Now, I have uh, recently come back from holiday, so I've done a little bit of sewing, and so I'm kind of sorting out some plans for the next couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, I've got a couple of things to show you. Um, I've also did some more dorset buttons on the plane on the way home from my holiday, so I'll just give, show you the, what I got up to there. But uh, my main stumbling block this week has been jeans. Now, my daughter uh, messaged me on Sunday and said, Mum, can you alter some jeans? They're a bit big. I said, fine, bring them over. Yeah, in my head thinking that's not gonna be a long job at all. She brought over a pile of four pairs of jeans. So two were too big, slightly around the waist. One was way too small and the other one was way too small as well. So yeah, too big, too small. Okay, I'll deal with the big ones First. I don't know if you've ever had that. Uh, my daughter and I seem to get it with lots of pairs of trousers that uh, we used to get, is where it gets gappy at the back. Um, so it kind of fits around the front and then you get that sort of gaping at the back. That is really easily fixed. Um, I can't remember where I learned how to do it, whether it's YouTube or anything else, but it's a really easy fix. I've given them back to her now, so I haven't got them to show you, but if I just describe, so if you've got the inside of the back of the jeans, all you have to do is make a slit and two slits either side, and then you feed in a, a bit of elastic, a nice wide elastic between those two points. You can secure it down one side, and then you kind of pull the other one to where it's going to fit you, where it closes in that gap, and then you sew it down, and then you can, what well, you can if you'd like, um, knead it all back up again. So you just get two lines of sewing down the outside. Sometimes you have to remove a, a label, but yeah, that's that's how you do it. And if you've if you've never done it that way, it's genius. Uh, it has to be jeans, can be trousers, anything. But if you've got that bit of gapping, if you just put a little bit of elastic in, it kind of cinches it in. Anyway, so I did that for two pairs. Brilliant, all done. Now the pair that she wants bigger, so she couldn't do them up by about. I would say about three inches. So I'm gonna make some bigger. So all I've done so far is I'm going to, um, I've opened up the sides, I've cut the waistband, unpicked that, unpicked the sides up to just below, yeah, just a tiny bit below the front pocket. And I'm going to do uh, what they do sometimes in is, and put a little triangle of fabric in between those pieces there and kind of sew it all back up again and then obviously I'll have to add a bit more back in the waistband. So all I've done so far is chop them. So yeah, so if she wants it altered by say three inches, these gaps are going to be an inch and a half wide. Now this is a pair of jeans that's got all patches, She these are her favourite jeans, but they've got all different patches on um, and the only jeans fabric I have is much darker fabric. I mean, it might be that I go through and try and look for something else, but I think it's, it might make it too obvious. I'm not sure. Um, I'll see what else I've got, but um, yeah, that's uh, my job for next week. The other pair she gave me that were too small are really too small, and I'm wondering whether to actually scale them down. She's a couple of sizes larger than me, so I'm on about um, whether I'll scale them down and have them for myself. Don't know, have to see. <laughs> so that was my jeans problem. Now, I uh, hope you didn't miss it, but I put out my uh, third instalment of my Fabric Wheel of Fate um, and the results of the uh, brushed flannel. So what I made in the end, if you haven't seen it, was a New Look 6404 and I made a pair of pyjama shorts out of the flannel and then I made um, a, like a hand warmer, a, you know, a heaty bean bag type thing where you heat them up in the microwave and two little hand warmers. Uh, I made the pyjama top with just a contrasting bit 
fabric on the binding so my husband knows which top goes with which pyjama shorts. So yes, that's uh, what I made this week. Um, I sp had to change the wheel because now we're down to three fabrics and it landed on the one that I really didn't want. <laughs> it landed on this fabric here. And as you can see, I haven't done anything with it yet. It's a really super light viscose and I keep going through all my patterns to try and decide. One thing I keep forgetting to say is the Fabric Wheel of Fate is where I'm using up um, fabrics that I have had for a long, long time, many years, and just keep ignoring and going past. For every pattern, every piece of fabric so far, I've made sure it's a pattern for my stash as well, because that's kind of using um, two things at the same time. So I haven't bought any new patterns. So hence I'm kind of running into trouble a little bit with this, because I haven't got many patterns to choose from to try and work it but I'll do it I'll find a way I'll uh, I'll make something from it <laughs> so when I came back from holiday I started to feel a bit guilty about all the fabrics that I bought for the grandsons um, recently and not done anything with so I thought it'd be bad time that I made a couple of things for them so using my favorite pattern uh, simplicity 8526 ignore all the costumes etc I use it for the sweatshirt and the joggers because it seems to be really good sometimes I put the hoods on this time I didn't because I didn't have enough fabric but for the little one um, I found this piece of French terry that I've obviously used before because a little bit was left over so I've managed to make him a little sweatshirt now it doesn't have the a kangaroo pocket on that one but that's quite easy to do I've copied it and he's got a little kangaroo pocket on the front so I'm really pleased I use that as I've said before he really loves Disney cars so this kind of looks like it but hopefully he'll like that I also made from the same pattern I've made a pair of sort of emergency trousers for when he's with me you know what it's like he's two nearly three anything can happen during the day and all the spare clothes that I have tend to go back to the his house and I never see them again so I thought Do you know what I'm going to make some emergency trousers so um, I've just had a nice piece of uh, sweatshirting fabric so I made him a little pair of trousers I'm waiting for him to come over so I can uh, finish the size on him but if that kind of works then I'll have a look through my stash and see what else I've got but yeah a good emergency pair of trousers so now I've got to think about the older one he's six now uh, nearly well seven next spring so I haven't made a top for him out of this pub pattern for quite a while so I've had to trace up another size um, so I've got a more cut out but I'm going to use the uh, shark French terrier I bought a while ago sort of camo shark so that's all cut up for me to make a top for him and then I'll feel a bit better about myself because I will have made stuff for the boys and not just me now, coming home from our flight, um, I won't bore you too much because I know a lot of you aren't um, interested in dorset buttons, but I did make a couple more buttons in different designs um, using the sparkly fabric again. Uh, I made that one. They have all got names. Um, that one there. I think I showed you that one before, actually. Um, now I'm getting confused what I've made and what I haven't. This one was a really pretty one. They are, as you can see, I've made quite a collection now. Oh, I will show you this one because to me it looks like a poinsettia. Uh, yeah, I just changed the colour. So you've got the ring around the outside and I changed the colour. Um, so it looks like a kind of poinsettia. So that's really cute. I might make another couple of those. But yeah, I've made quite a few now, collection, and now we need to go and buy some more rings. Um, as I say, I'm going to use them for Christmas in some form. So I had great fun doing that on the plane on the way home. I did manage to cut something else out this week, ready to get sewing. Um, I had this fabric from my um, sewing subscription box, my knit fabric one, from the store down in Bournemouth, my sewing box. And it was this cotton jersey in quite a bright, 
fabric. I will admit it's quite bright. But um, really I need a couple of, couple of uh, wintry dresses. I think I must have done a good clear out last year when I put everything away for the summer because I don't seem to be able to find them or I threw them away. So I've used this pattern many times. It's a wonderful pattern. It's McCall's 7122. It's one of their learn to sew patterns, beginners. Um, it's just a jersey tress, but it's a raglan sleeve, which is my favorite. And it's just a really nice shape. I've made the short sleeve version. I've made a tunic. I've made the dresses. I've just noticed that they have a pair of leggings on there and I've never made that or even noticed it before. So yeah, um, if you can get your hands on this pattern and you want to have a go at doing a kind of a jersey dress, then I, I do recommend this one. But yeah, it's all cut out to make the longer sleeve version. Um, so that's another to-do uh, list next week. And another thing that I really need to do is, I every year I say this, is I don't want to wear jeans every day. Um, I don't often wear leggings. I've recently made a couple of really nice ponty trousers so I can get those done. But for kind of going out, I don't want to keep wearing jeans. And I've got this lovely piece of really soft brown twill here. It's got no stretch in it. It's a woven, got no stretch, but it's very soft. And I've got a couple of patterns. I can't decide which one to use. But um, either Simplicity 8891 now this is a really good shape on me. It's got a side zip. I used this pattern for, I think back in the summer, I made a coronation pair of trousers out of some coronation fabric. And this is the pattern I used. Um, I've actually used it for the shorts as well. So you can't really see the trousers there because it's sort of predominantly the dress, but I do use that pattern for trousers and shorts. But I also have this one, which I've never made up, and that's Simplicity 9376. So this again is a flat fronted, and I think it must be elastic back. Yeah, so it's got no closures on that one. So flat fronted, elastic back. You've got one with side pockets and a tie, but that wouldn't be quite right. Certainly it's got no pockets on the back, so certainly if I do it, I'll put a pocket on the back. But I feel like I want to have a go at this one. If any of you have made this one, let me know how it how it goes. I did a lot of zip flies um, going back a couple of weeks ago. So that's why I want to kind of make these a bit more uh, pull on or easy to, without doing all the zip flies and the buttons and everything. So yeah, might have a go at this one, but let me know. So that's another thing I would really like to get done next week. So next week, I'm sure you've all know by now, it's Gift to November, hashtag Gift to November 23, which is hosted by Adam from Adam Sews and Alison from Sew Like Dotty. They did this last year, they're doing it again on a grander scale this year. Some amazing prizes. Uh, lots of people have been vlogging, almost one or at least, at least one or even two a day have put out some fantastic ideas. Now, my video comes out on Thursday. Um, I probably won't bombard you with any more ideas because by then it'll only have a week to go. But um, I've just got a couple of simply things that um, I'm gonna be giving as presents this year. So I will pass on my idea to you. So look out for that on Thursday. So on to life then. Um, obviously we came back from holiday at the weekend. We had an amazing time. We went to Tenerife in the Canary Islands. Um, I would sum it up by saying um, we did. I did lots of reading. I think I talked about all my books I read last week. Uh, we did some walking, um, but the best thing we did was um, in the middle of the island, you've got Mount Tady, which is um, about 3,700 meters tall. So it's extremely high up. Um, that's at the very top. You can go to the crater, which is about 2,000 meters high. But if you go there at night time, it is meant to be the best place for, for stargazing. So you can go on organized tours, but we decided just to drive up there ourselves. Um, we took uh, flasks of tea, of course, because um, we knew it was going to be really cold up there. And we just parked up in the lay-by 
and oh my goodness, these stars were the most amazing things I've ever seen. Uh, we live in a town, a small town, but it's got obviously light pollution like a lot of places. So yes, we get to see stars, but we don't get to see them oh, in all their glory. It was amazing. I saw five shooting stars. Now, I think I've ever only seen one in my lifetime before then, but they were whizzing across the sky. It was just, it was just brilliant. I And it was just, it was so quiet, so dark up there, pitch, pitch black. And just to see the sky and we saw the Milky Way and I've never seen that before. So, I mean, we did try and take some photos, but obviously it didn't really come out. I might try and put one at the end just so you can get an idea. But being up there, at one point we're on our own in this car park, just the sky, it was just, it was just awesome, truly awesome. So obviously that was the highlight, I would say, of our holiday. So we're back now. At uh, the weekend, we're hopefully catching up with my son and his wife and the little baby Chloe, who is now, well, she's nearly four months old now. So I'm really excited to catch up with her because she is changing so rapidly. Um, and then next week, um, hopefully get some uh, sewing in of the things I want to do. So I think I will leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in to me and for all the comments and all the lovely positive things you say to me and suggestions. It really does make my day, oh, my weekend. And I will see you all very soon. Don't forget to check out any uh, videos you missed. If you missed the Fabric Wheel of Fate, uh, I'll put some playlists at the end. But thanks again and have a wonderful weekend.